yes, yes. So it's very heartening yes. to yes know that uh, one quick question before we go to the next the thing you touched upon zillennials and the latest generation and i think you must be interacting with a lot in in soil at soil yes yes and uh, as you rightly said their preferences their way of thinking uh, their decision making is quite different from uh, you know others so when they become the work workforce yes. uh, there has always been a question of managing millennials and i think now we should move to managing zillennials correct so <laughs> what are the few uh, examples how are they different from let's say the previous people from our era one thing is very clear that the zillennials learn lot through lot more through video so you know the the, the ways of learning uh, there is no, this is backed up by research by the way you can do read this research that their uh, medium for learning is a lot more through video as in one two medium of learning is a lot through experiential learning so a lot more through experience rather than the earlier pedagogy of just the socrates method of inquiry the the socrates method of inquiry is still relevant but it has to be dovetailed into the new methods of creating the right experience for people and uh, i think the zillennials uh, something we by the way we researched this because we had a specific conference on the millennial to zillennial interface and we actually did research to this in that research we found the zillennials were far more global from now of course our research sample was based on urban cities and not based on the tier 2 and tier 3 but i would suspect that might be true of the smaller towns as well that these guys are much more global in the way they interact with their peers in other countries i was i didn't even know that a lot of kids studying in shivnada school where my granddaughter goes for example because we hosted this conference jointly with shivnada school So it's a business school and a high school joining hands to host this conference. It's very unusual, and Shivnada is one of the best schools in the country. So, interestingly, we heard many stories of young kids, like eleven, twelve, thirteen, who are collaborating with other kids in other parts of the world and on their own, not because somebody enabled it to happen. They are digital natives. They know how to build collaboration across boundaries. and something very fascinating and interesting that they are doing so these are some of the things we saw we also saw that uh, and this by the way was also true of millennials i think many of them want to do something to make a difference to society they are not just uh, you know they are not prepared to listen to the talk by the older people that this cannot be done or this country cannot be improved so there is a lot more imagination and positive energy at play to say we can do this like a little kid who created a startup you know around tires who i met who he was a teenager when he created this company this is he saw tires being burnt automotive tires being burnt and he was aghast so he said how can i set up a business of recycling tires and he actually created a company like that which then was scaled up but he was a teenager when he did that so that kid who is now in his early 20s came to address our conference and what a and by the way now he has been taken away by the united nations as one of their leaders global leaders and that he does he is part of the un now network on how he helps other organizations with this alternate thinking but uh, very interestingly there are many more stories of young people maybe in our time when many of us were idealistic and had some thought but you know very few people had the courage to go to this and actually do it i think uh, this generation does have the courage they're doing a lot more experiments of that kind and uh, which is very interesting and uh, once so another being related question comes so when they come to the workforce uh, you the normal way of managing workforce may not work with them so how do you see the managers role changing when they manage this kind of workforce so obviously much more inclusive much more diverse much more uh, you know welcoming alternate thinking uh, obviously um, you know the old style of command and control and hierarchy is not going to work at all so you will have a much more inclusive way you will have to the bosses will have to become more like facilitators and coaches rather than top down managers so the old top down manager will not be relevant in the future 
And uh, I think uh, therefore the leaders will have to become much more like facilitators and saying, I don't know. And I think the whole question of their be getting people around the right question and asking people to figure it out uh, rather than trying to give them answers. I think uh, so really, I think uh, when we talked about the whole empowerment doctrine, which started 30 years back, I mean, today, if a leader does not encourage empowerment, the person will be obsolete because these people are not going to go by the old style to say, you give me the carrot and show me the stick. And that, that process is not going to work. And I think increasingly people do not think even this is something very unique, Sanjay. People from needy families who don't have much money, they, but they also don't think twice before quitting a job. You know, this is a new phenomena that I find a lot of young people, also the people who have graduated from soil, I say, so what are you going to do? Sir, kuch socialing. So it's very interesting. People are very, at one level, very self-confident that they'll figure out some way to survive and thrive. And so this concept of job security and saying, I need the company. Uh, and it's not just because of a selfish reason that people have become, I don't buy into the discourse which say people have become much more selfish, self-centered, and therefore, thereby they're, they are not loyal to you. I think that is not the right way to, in my opinion, to look at it. I think people are interested in great experiences and they do not think twice about before changing a so-called steady job to do something new. And we are broadly calling it the gig economy. But, you know, this morning I was reviewing the students who have not been placed from the previous batch from our school and I was getting concerned. Why are they not able to get the right opportunity? Because, because of COVID, some companies have withdrawn the offers given to them and things like that. So, you know, but I was talking to the, my colleagues that how many of them are responding to our offer for help right now. So they, I was amazed to see that quite a few students are not responding. So then I was telling my faculty, maybe they have found out something to do, you know. And even in a very difficult environment, people have just figured out what to do. So this seems to be some new phenomena out there. People are willing to work on projects. They are willing to live in the uncertainty. And this kind of thing may happen more and more in the future. People are already predicting the size of the gig economy and how organizations in the future will be irrelevant and you will only be working on short projects and then doing something else. You know, the metaphor of a shippy who goes on a ship as a captain and finishes the project and then after that you are back shore with your family and then again when the time comes you pick up the next ship to go to. You know, they choose to be part of the shippy's behavior for a long time. But uh, right. this seems to be something new that seems to be catching on.